grow so tall I want to tangle up my twisted limbs with yours I want to lose track of the time I spent without you It's time to make you lose I don't want to lose your Hey everyone, it's Christina from American Rooted Flower Farm. So right now, uh, I just got to the flower farm and we've been gone for two days. We've been in Santa Cruz. Um, uh, Ona played a show. He played music with his band um, at a Frisbee tournament last night. And so we went a day early. That way we can spend some time with uh, friends and do some exploring and uh, have some fun with the kids. And so we left on Friday. So we left on Friday. Today is Sunday, Sunday evening. Um, it's about five o'clock and we left about five o'clock on Friday. Now we didn't water the farm on Friday. The farm didn't get watered on Saturday and today is Sunday. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around with you guys and show you what, uh, what the farm looks like from not being watered for three days. We are having mosquitoes out here again. When I was out here Wednesday, um, there was a lot of mosquitoes. When I was out here Thursday, not as many mosquitoes, but um, they were still biting. And so I have been coming to the farm in long loose pants and uh, long sleeves. I haven't seen any mosquitoes since I got out here yet. Um, but if they continue to be a problem, I will call embankment again. Uh, I still have not heard from the, um, from the UC extension office. So I am going to email them tomorrow. I may email them tonight. That way they see it tomorrow. That way the guy sees it tomorrow morning and, uh, hopefully he'll get back to me with some kind of update. I mean, even if it's just like, uh, we're still waiting for samples. We're still, or we're still waiting for results or we're still, we're doing this or that. I just want to make sure that they didn't forget about me. Um, I don't have my tripod with me, so that's why I'm um, crouching down on the ground. And I will walk around with the camera and show you guys affected the plants are to the lack of water for three days. Let's go look. Okay, let's go look. Okay, so I am limited on my battery. So this is going to have to be semi-quick. Um, and we'll do somewhat of a farm tour too. So we have these, this is the top row right here. We have these white light sunflowers. These are the white light sunflowers, uh, pro cut, which means that they are like the lightest sunflower that you can get. That's like, that's why they call them white. And then the white light, the light part of the name is because it has a light center whereas um, a different variety that we have has a dark black center. And those are called white night. I have a few of these popping up from here down. There may be like 50, I've already harvested some of those and I'm still, um, I will harvest those more tomorrow. And then on the third row right here, we have some beautiful we have some beautiful, beautiful amaranth. Look at this. Isn't it gorgeous? I love it. This is called coral fountains. It's uh, really, it's really good for wedding work. This is called hot biscuit. It's an upright amaranth. So it's um, spiked amaranth. It doesn't hang down. It doesn't droop like uh like the coral fountain does this one is a spiked amaranth and then there's all amaranth here all the amaranth all the amaranth and a gigantic amaranth there's a random zinnia right here okay so down here i have basil which i use for filler and this one is the uh, Miss Burns Lemon. 
and it's actually starting to flower. I just pinched these um, within the last two weeks because I wanted them to branch out more and be taller. And so I pinched them and I may do that again. So I still haven't got bit by any mosquitoes. So that is, that's a good sign. Uh, it was semi-sprinkling. There were some raindrops that fell when we got home or on my drive out here. There were some raindrops on the windshield, but it's not definitely not gonna rain enough to water the farm. So this end isn't um, as affected as much. Uh, once we get down further, I'll show you. Just what I've seen from, I mean, I haven't even walked down there yet. I just seen it when I was driving in. So right here, this small area, I started planting some gold light sunflowers on Thursday. Um, and then I didn't finish because a friend came out to help me and we've done some harvesting. So here are some lily put uh, white lily puts. Here we have um, some young cosmos. And this is really interesting right here that this one is wilted as if it's not getting water, but these are very drought tolerant. Um, I have a Xenia back here. You can see this one right here. Uh, it's it's uh, looking like it's dying, like it's dried. However, it's receiving just amount, the same amount of water as the one next to it. So that tells me that this one is affected by the disease and also that these cosmos are affected by the disease because they are actually right on top of the, the drip tape right here and so they are getting plenty of water um, the soil borne pathogen is obviously affecting the way the plant is using water or making it so the plant is not able to receive the water so there's a few different types of diseases that will cause plants to wilt like this and it affects the way the water is um, taken up by the plant and so um, I'm wondering if maybe we have some fusarium, I believe it's called fusarium wilt. There's also a bacterial wilt and then uh, another wilt that starts the V. Um, now these zinnias right here also look dried up, but those may be lacking some water. I'm not sure because this one here is not, is not dried, is not looking uh, wilted. These are polar bear zinnias, they're all white. And then I have another succession of the white night right here of sunflowers. And this is about um, maybe 25 feet of sun, the white night sunflowers that are ready to be harvested. I have lily put rose over here. Uh, this one is really interesting. It's very pretty. Look at the dimension on this and the color, like that's green, that's green and white. And then it goes, to, it, it goes to pink. Gosh, I hope the, my recording gets better and I'm not like all over the place with the camera. But it's just, it's gorgeous. Look at the sky. Um, here's some scabiosa. These are scabiosa mix, uh, the zinnias, which need water. So right now I only turn water on the first row because, uh, because uh, we need to have all of the pressure. Look at this awesome feather I found. I collect feathers as well. Fun, fun fact, Christina, fun fact. So yeah, so here we've got a ton of wilting from lack of water. Uh, this one is a surprise to me that I just discovered. This is actually a Mexican sunflower. It's a perennial sunflower. There's another one right here. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, it's on fire. I've been wondering what those were because I could see that there was 
a bunch of them. There was a few of them and they were all the same plant. However, they weren't blooming yet and it looked like a sunflower, but it didn't exactly look like a sunflower. So um, I wasn't sure what it was and I'd been waiting for it to bloom. What I'm doing now is I'm gonna go, okay, so the water, uh, we can turn all four rows on at the same time, which is two, three mains, three um, uh, turn on valves. We can turn them all on at the same time. However, they lack pressure. So uh, we will turn them on one at a time. But if we're lacking on time, then we have to turn them all on at the same time. But we don't get as good of pressure. So it's really a, it's um, either way you work it, either way we do it, it's uh, probably about the same outcome of time versus the amount of water being put out. Uh, the first row is, the first row, the drip tape is being constricted by the roots of the cosmos. I discovered that when the extension, the extension guy was out here, when we pulled out one of the cosmos, the drip tape had grown around, or the, the roots had grown around the drip tape. And the end of that row has been struggling for water. Uh, for a while now. Ona needs to can split the line and have it come off of a different sprinkler, have it come off of a different outlet. That way um, the pressure, we don't lose pressure and it's not being choked out anymore. That line doesn't continue to go. It won't be choked out anymore. It will still continue to be choked out. However, it won't affect the end of the line because the end of the line will be at the cosmos instead of all the way at the end. Okay, so right here, so now I'm at the second row and there is more amaranth. There's a ton of amaranth going all the way down. That is all amaranth right there on that side. Um, down below me, these are marigolds. These are the special variety of marigold. Uh, they are either orange or creamy yellow and they have a very distinct marigold smell that I don't particularly like. Uh, we have some Benares white over here, which I actually more wish I had more of. I can never have enough white flowers. Somehow I keep like lacking myself, I keep Um, okay, so over here amongst these weeds, we have the globe amaranth that is ready to be harvested. These plants will get a lot bigger. Um, as I cut them, they are cut and come again, so they will continue to branch off. Um, over here, which are very much struggling for water, they're wilted, extremely wilted. These are um, very uh, drought very drought intolerant, I believe. Um, I know when you cut them, they will wilt super quickly if you don't immediately put them in water. Oh, but anyways, those are forget-me-nots, the pink variety. It's called Mystery Rose. Okay, so I have some younger varieties of younger, a younger succession of Cosmos right here that are extremely wilted. Um, so on the Cosmos now, they are still blooming. The ones that are still blooming have uh, defects. I call them inbred because they look inbred. They have, uh, they'll either have like multiple heads. They'll have, um, the petals will be deformed like this one. The petals are deformed. It's not supposed to be bushy like that. And you can also see the yellow, like amongst the yellow at the tip of the cos of the petals. And it's not supposed to be like that. Um, this is deformed, I believe. The center is not supposed to look like that. It's kind of balled up at the end, like it has little bulbs. It's not supposed to be like that. These petals are supposed to be longer and they're supposed to be cylinder shaped. Um, right here, I have some marigolds that aren't doing too well. They've got some thripe damage, but there's a ton of them. 
Uh, I've used those the last two weeks in arrangements. Oh, my ageratum is drying out right here. Looking not happy. A Cosmo dying of dying its death early. An early death to that Cosmo. Um, the ageratum super dry. I don't know if these ones will come back. They might just be too dry. They might have gotten too dry. Um, but I have more ageratum down here, which is gorgeous. The, the color of it is so pretty. There's some straw flowers here. I did turn on all the water now, so uh, they, they will all be receiving water right now. Um, some more straw flower. Uh, more of the gumfrina. And here is a perfect example of companion planting. Well, it's a form of companion planting. Um, this is a weed right here. It's a type of dandelion. Now that's a bee. So it's a type of dandelion. You can see that it's got um, aphids on it really bad. And so that's keeping the aphids off of my other plants because they like that one more. So I do keep that weed. Anytime I see that weed growing, uh, I, um, I leave it and I let it grow. I do the same thing in my backyard. So this is the end of the video. Um, my battery's gonna die soon and I don't wanna kill it completely. And so uh, I will make this the end of the video. And, uh, thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a great week and I'll let you guys know as soon as I know more about the soil borne pathogen and I'm gonna get to planting some more sunflowers right now. I didn't know what I am without you standing next to me. I wanna grow so tall. I wanna tangle up my twisted limbs.